Hey everybody, I'm Jason McCreary. If you're in the Laravel community, you probably know me as JMac, the creator of Shift. And today I'm gonna to talk about automation, of course. Particularly automation using GitHub Actions to set up CI for your Laravel applications. So what I have here is a Laravel 10 application, uh, nice and fresh, running Laravel new, nothing fancy here, just a basic project where we can set things up and get things going. I've already pushed it out to GitHub, and this is a public repo. You'll be able to look at this after the talk. And I'll have a couple different branches set up where you can look at all the different jobs and workflows that we're gonna create with GitHub Actions. So to get started, let's just jump out and take a look at GitHub Actions Quick Start. When you're setting up GitHub Actions for the very first time, what you end up doing is a lot of uh, searching and copying from blog posts as well as the documentation to kind of piece together what you want. So hopefully what we'll go through today will not only help you understand GitHub Actions, but also how to reference the docs directly to do what you want. That's not to say you wouldn't do some searches every now and then, but again, hopefully get you more familiar than just kind of piecing it together. So to get started, let's make this GitHub workflows directory. So I'll do make dir dash P on that and let's copy their little example and we'll do a PB paste on Mac to that workflows directory and we'll just call this example YAML. Now, if we jump over to PHP Storm for the editor, we'll bring up example YAML and let's just kind of take a look at what's going on here. We have a name for this workflow, it's GitHub Actions Demo. There's a run name, we'll see here in a second where this appears in GitHub's UI. And it happens on certain events. You can think of this on much like a JavaScript event. Uh, it's on push or on pull request or on tag or on release. There's all sorts of different uh, events that you can use here. And you can use multiple as well. So you could do push and pull request. You can limit it to which branches are being pushed to if you only want this to happen when you push to your main branch or you only want to release when things are merged with the main branch or the production branch. So there's a lot of versatility here, a lot of options uh, that you have to kind of do what you want for your particular workflows. In this case, we only really care about push because that's uh, simply all we're going to do for our demos. Uh, but again, you can reference the documentation and lock this down as needed. Your job name here is something else that's going to appear in the UI. It may be referenced sometimes within your workflow, but you can really name this uh, any kind of variable name or slug that you want. Uh, the runs on is the type of environment. So in this case, it's gonna run on the latest uh, stable version of Ubuntu. And then steps is where all of your workflow and job steps happen. Now here GitHub is providing some examples of some very basic run commands. These are just commands that are gonna run on the system. So it's just echoing out to the Ubuntu shell, right? You know, we could run any kind of command that's available on Ubuntu. We could say date, we could do all sorts of things here. So what is interesting in here and what you might use is the variables. So these little mustache template tags that are being used allow you to reference all sorts of things. So of course, GitHub has a lot of different references, the repository name, the author, uh, the reference uh, to the commit SHA, the OS that's being used. And finally, you have access to uh, information about the job itself, so the job status. So let's go ahead and commit this just kind of to a learning branch. So I'm gonna jump back out here and do a git checkout dash B. We'll call this learning, and I'm gonna do a git add dot, and go ahead and commit that as an example workflow. And we'll push this up to GitHub. So if we were to open a pull request for this, we would see that as part of the workflow that's happening. But since we're not gonna go through that process just yet, we should be able to jump over to actions and we can see information about all of our workflows here. So here's that run name that's being output here. If you don't specify a run name, it'll just use the name of the workflow. So it's kind of nice to actually use the run name because you have access to put in things like the variables. So if you have multiple people running the same job on your team, this is nice because you can see that, you know, Bob and Sally are running the workflow. 
If we click down into the job, we'll see some feedback here again on the job name that's being set on the side. And of course, green checkboxes everywhere that this is passing. And if we click even deeper into the actual job itself, we can see all the different steps that happened. So we have that set up job. Uh, you'll always have that as the first thing. That's really setting up the environment, installing any dependencies, things of that nature. And from then on, we see the different steps that are in our job. So check out the repository. Here's check out the repository. Again, if you don't have a name, you'll just get the command itself. So we can see where to output that. And notice that those variables are now being uh, filled in. So the repo name is being filled in, the workflow, the branch, uh, and then finally the job status is success at that point in the job. Okay, so now that we're familiar with this GitHub action, let's actually tweak this a little bit for PHP. So I'm gonna get rid of this, and anytime you're working with a PHP project, you're gonna to wanna to use an action to kind of set up the PHP environment. You can of course use the OS to install PHP if you want, or use potentially even the OS's version, but it might not be the version that you want, it's not gonna have Composer, and you're really gonna do a lot of manual steps to kind of set up that environment. What's nicer is actually to just, again, jump out to a web search, GitHub action setup PHP. And we can see this top result here where we have this setup PHP GitHub action. And if we scroll down to its usage, we should have a pretty straightforward example that we can set up. So here we go, let's just copy this as well and we'll paste this into our workflow, tweak that formatting just a bit, and we'll see that this is setting up yet another GitHub action, in this case, the setup PHP v2, and it's sending it its own options. All of those are documented for that package, the most important one being the PHP version that we want to run. So if we want the latest and greatest, we can run 8.2, we could go back a version to 8.1, uh, and in this case, it's just gonna print out the version uh, that's on the system. Now, I'm actually going to tweak this just a bit. So instead of this setup PHP output PHP version, to demonstrate that this is actually putting it out on the system, we'll say um, output PHP version, just two different things here. And instead of that, I'm gonna do PHP-V, right? Because this will actually be on the system. So let's go ahead and do a git add dot again, git commit dash m, um, set up PHP environment, git push origin head. Let's clear that out for next time. And if we jump back to our jobs or our actions, we should see uh, now that this is running, we caught this, we'll click into it as well, explore, and give this just a second to catch up and it's done. So if we go back to set up PHP, we'll see that it updated to PHP 8.1.14, it went ahead and installed a Composer, and it can continue to install other tools, which we'll see here in a minute. And then it prints out the PHP version, in this case, 8.1.4, and we can see that we can also print that out uh, from the command line, get additional information, 8.1.14. So great, so we've set up a GitHub action that creates an environment that's running PHP. That's the basis of everything that we're gonna build for the rest of this talk. All right, so jumping back to the command line, let's do a git checkout on another branch for lint. And what I wanna do now is actually change this file slightly. So instead of example, let's call this lint. And I'll change this to uh, lint. And we'll say Jason McCreary is checking the project for lint. Great. All right, still on push. Let's get rid of that sidebar for a little more room. We still want to check out the repository. We still want to set up PHP. Uh, we don't care about printing the version now. What we'd like to do is have an action that checks our project for lint. And you can actually do that by running a system command, in this case php-l, but you would have to loop over all of your files and things of that nature. Uh, and Again, there's no reason to necessarily do it manually. Now, to save us from the web search, I know that there's a GitHub action out there that we can actually use directly. So if we scroll down here, so let's copy this. 
we'll get rid of that line and let's bring this in as a name fix our indentation level there and this will be check PHP syntax and let's get these formatted over as well there we go great okay so we're gonna check PHP syntax uh, we're gonna use this particular github action notice that 8.1 branch we want to make sure that coincides with our PHP version and it's gonna look in the current path and it's gonna exclude any log file all right so let's do a git add dot again git commit dash m workflow for checking PHP syntax get push origin head all right and jumping back out to github let's close the lint we'll go to actions we'll see this running if we jump into this okay it looks like we need to wait just a second for that uh, runner to get started so again it's setting up the job this should go pretty quickly now and it looks like we actually forgot to change this so I'm just gonna simply call this uh, lint all right, and if we jump back to GitHub Actions, we still have that old name. We haven't pushed that yet. If we jump into Setup PHP, everything should be fine there. And if we jump into Syntax, we'll see where it uh, went out. It installed that particular GitHub Action via Docker. And if we scroll down, there was no configuration file. We just used uh, the options that were in GitHub Action. And it ran against the 51 files that were in our project. So again, this is just a new Laravel project. So it just has you know, the user model, some service providers, config files, you know, migrations, not a lot of files in there necessarily. Uh, so it lent at all those. What's really nice about this is, again, I don't have to set anything up in my project. I don't have to set anything up locally. I don't have dependencies. I don't have configuration files. I can just do some really basic stuff that gives me some confidence that, you know, for example, I'm not pushing a syntax error. So super quick to set up you know, might seem uh, a little silly, but it happens. And so to have this peace of mind uh, with just a few lines of configuration uh, is pretty nice. All right, let's keep going. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and add that and I'll append it to the previous commit and don't look anybody, I am going to get push origin head dash F, sorry. All right, so we'll do a uh, git checkout dash B on style. Okay, what I want to do now is make sure that the code is formatted a certain way, right? The code style adheres to whatever my team or project might have. Now, the simplest uh, version of that, especially for a Laravel project, would be to adhere to Laravel's code style. Uh, so, uh, what we can do here is, instead of finding another GitHub action, let's start to take advantage of this setup PHP, because we already saw that it had that tools option, where I can go in here and tell it, which tools I want to install. Now, I don't remember the syntax for this exactly, so let's go check their docs. All right, so if we jump back out, tools is optional. Uh, specify the tools you wanna to set up, accepts a string in CSV format. Okay, cool, so I wanna install Laravel Pint. All right, and here I would want to make another uh, step in the job that says check code style, and we would want to run um, pint dash dash test, I believe is what it is. All right, so let's do a git add dot git commit dash m uh, check code style. All right, we'll do a git push. Oh, didn't set the upstream. Git push dash u origin head all right there we go next time we should be able to do git push if we scroll back up to our actions uh, click into here we should see that this next one is running for style i've changed the name to lint we did that last time while we were waiting and if we click in here it's going to continue to install everything all right so now that everything has finished uh, we see that we have those 51 files that it checked and if we look, it tested 50 files. Uh, so there must be one file that Pint uh, ignores by default as compared to all the PHP files in the project. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, I wonder which one it's automatically excluding. 
anyway uh, you know what let's let's break one of these real quick so I'm gonna jump into app models user and let's just do something we know would probably not make um, pint or our code style very happy so I'll just put all that um, kind of on one line here no space even so that's definitely gonna make uh, the code style uh, gods pretty upset so let's do a get at dot get commit dash M break code style get push all right and if we go back out to github actions we'll let this run and let's kind of see what this looks like uh, on a failure right what happens when the job fails okay and so this would be what a failure would look like so kind of going back top level here we have an x versus the check a nice red x we can go in here and see exactly which job uh, in our entire workflow failed we can click into that job and see exactly which step failed here and then of course the output from that job letting us know that the class definition for the user model is where we had the offending uh, bit of code cool okay so i'm going to do a git reset dash dash hard head tilde tilde one not two <laughs> and then let's uh, force push that back over top of everything just to get rid of that bit of code style here okay so the next thing I want to demonstrate is a matrix build and to do this we're gonna need to go back out to the documentation because I don't remember all this off the top of my head yet another example uh, of where I copy either from existing projects or the uh, docs itself so if we jump down here we can get in to our matrix now what a matrix does is allows us to have some variance in our build for example the versions in which we run the dependencies that are installed uh, anything of that nature you can even toggle the different OS's if you want um, so if you have a package that needs to make sure to run on Windows and Mac or uh, different Linux uh, flavors you could do that here so we see the examples here where we're varying versions and varying OS's and all those different variables build this matrix uh, that then runs multiple iterations uh, of your job right so let's copy uh, this strategy and matrix we're going to drop that up top here into our uh, setup for the job and in this case we're going to have strategy matrix and I'm not necessarily going to um, change the OS in this scenario we could do that and then you would just toggle that here uh, you know with um, the template variable and you would pull out the matrix version uh, for that OS uh, but again we'll just stick with Ubuntu but just to see from the docs uh, that is possible what we really care about is uh, toggling uh, the PHP version and what I'm going to do here is toggle between 8.1 and 8.2. Now, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to save everyone a bunch of headaches. Uh, be careful with your version numbers here, using them as floats. Uh, you uh, can run into some problems depending on how you output those variables. I found this out when I tried to do some things with 8.0. Uh, this actually gets truncated uh, in certain instances so you definitely want to make sure that if you have uh, point versions that you're messing with here uh, in this case 8.1 8.0 go ahead and use strings um, <laughs> it's gonna save you uh, hours and hours of trying to debug one of these builds someday so now that we've set up that PHP version we need to go plug it into all the different areas that we might want to use it all right, so we can see uh, how we might do that uh, a little lower here where we take matrix and version. So if we take that, we'll put matrix and we'll change this to PHP dash version there. And same thing here, we need to drop that into place uh, on this PHP dash version. And where else do we need to potentially use this? Uh, I don't think anywhere else so that's okay let's jump in here we'll do a git add dot git commit dash m setup matrix build for PHP 8.1 and 8.2 cool 
What's really nice about this uh, is that even if you only ever want to run things on one particular version, I would definitely recommend still setting up a matrix build. What's nice is when I am ready someday to upgrade to 8.2, then all I really need to do is go in here and change change this to 8.2 and I can start testing my application to see even just at a CI level, you know, does everything pass? Is my lint going? Are my tests going? Do the, does my code style still match? Or do, do my dependencies install even? Even if you don't have a very robust uh, CI, uh, it's still worth it. It can still give you a little bit of confidence that things are going to be compatible with that new version. And let's jump back out to our checks. We'll go to actions and we'll see that things failed. And this is a bit of another got you. Um, I wanted to demonstrate this for two reasons. One, here's where to look for things when uh, your file actually has uh, an issue, your, your workflow file. So the workflow is actually not valid. Uh, line 20, it doesn't know what uh, that matrix build is at that point in time. Uh, so let's go take a look uh, at that. The next bit of a gotcha is you can't actually use um, these variables in certain places. So my understanding of the limitation here is that these uses statements uh, can't have variables uh, within them. And if you think about it, it's probably because um, the underlying system's kind of optimized and does a couple passes to pull all the Docker containers that it needs to kind of set up this job, right? So uh, if we want to check lint, we need to make sure that we're checking it in our specific version. So this gives us an opportunity to actually get rid of an action. Um, and this is a nice thing. We, we really want to use um, the setup PHP in our environment, uh, the OS, as much as possible. You know, the more GitHub actions you have, uh, the slower your workflow is going to be. Uh, so what we can do here is this is a comma separated list. Uh, we can pull in uh, this over true PHP lint package because it's just a package after all. And um, it'll actually just get installed on the system based on our uh, OS and PHP version. Uh, and instead, we can change this to run uh, PHP lint with this dash dash exclude option and everything in the current path. So we can use its command line options, which is all uh, the GitHub action was, was passing down anyway. All right, let's git add dot, git commit dash m, uh, use tools instead of GitHub actions, git push. Oh, I didn't set the upstream for this branch. Git push. This is why I do git push origin head all the time. You might have been wondering why I was doing that all the time. It's just the easiest way to make sure no matter where I am, uh, it's pushing to the specific origin, the current branch. Uh, it's just it's just muscle memory for me. Okay, this should be running uh, now that it is running and we're actually seeing some jobs here. We at least know that... Um, our uh, syntax is valid for our workflow. And what you might have also noticed uh, is that we actually have two jobs over here now. This is where that job name uh, becomes a little bit important. Uh, and we can see because of PHP 8.1 and PHP 8.2, uh, it's going to run that on, it's gonna run those jobs multiple times. So if we had 8.3 here, we would see lint parentheses 8.3. If we ran across different OSs, we would see those combinations as well. Uh, and this demonstrates kind of the power uh, of the matrix build. So again, I would use matrix builds no matter what, even if you only have uh, one specific option here or one version that you're currently supporting. Uh, again, it's just a nice way to be able to jump in and see what that next version is. All right, let's start to move a little quicker here and get through the last thing we would probably want to do in CI. And of course, the most common thing to do in CI, which is to run our tests. And if we jump back to our editor, the first thing I want to do is I actually want to keep the lint workflow. And what I like to do when I have multiple workflows is actually create separate uh, workflows for each one. You could, of course, because your environments are probably going to be the same and your matrix is going to be the same, just have a bunch of different steps uh, in this particular workflow if you wanted. 
but I find that by separating them, not only is it nice from an organization and a maintenance perspective, but you do get a little bit more performance uh, because they'll actually end up running in parallel. So I'm just going to copy this and we'll change this to test and I'll add it to get myself. And again, in the interest of time, since we're getting towards the end here, let me just go ahead and paste in uh, this next little step here. So these next two steps are going to be to install the composer dependencies and of course to run our tests. And I've copied this uh, from the setup PHP GitHub action and the running the test is pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just the name run tests. And uh, in this case for uh, a Laravel project, the default is going to be to run uh, the PHP unit test suite and everything should be configured. So let's do a git add dot git commit dash m add workflow to run tests get push origin head and if we jump back out to our actions we should see uh oh i actually uh forgot to update a couple things here we see two lints <laughs> which is incorrect so let's change this uh, in our test we're going to call this test tests and this will be is running the test suite awesome all right let's change that get add dot get a pin get push origin head dash f just to give you all a clean history when you're looking uh you don't want to see my multiple different commits uh so we force pushed over that uh and now if we refresh this page we should have our tests and lint so let's go check out the test suite uh, i noticed that it failed a second ago i'm not sure if that was because Maybe the name was wrong, or um, maybe I did something wrong. So let's find out. All right, so it looks like I actually do have an error in the example tests, and that's because the uh, application key has not been set. So I'm going to jump back to my project. This is, again, really just because it's a new Laravel project. But I do want to use uh, this as an opportunity to point something out. Uh, what I like to do is make sure that I configure as many things for CI uh, in the PHP unit uh, file. And then anything else that is going to vary, I would actually end up creating a .env.ci file. And as part of uh, this setup, you could basically do an additional uh, step here. That would be something along the lines of like setup environment environment variables and we could copy our .env.ci to the .env file if you wanted to track everything but again uh, for simple things that need to be configured i like just uh changing these here so we'll change this to app key and let's have artisan generate that for us so i'm going to jump out to the command line php artisan key generate and I think they not shot show I think that'll just dump that out directly okay good we now have our app key configured particularly for our tests so let's do a get add dot and I get append and I get push origin head dash f again to get those tests running uh, the way we like now if we jump back out to github everything should be running and we should see here in just a second that these are green. All right, the last thing I want to demo is adding some services to our application. Of course, the tests run out of the example project. They're simply hitting endpoints and asserting that true is true. But in your application, you're likely going to be dealing with database or some kind of caching layer or external APIs. And you might want to configure those uh, services to run in your CI. So setting up the most common one would be to set up a database which mimics our production database, uh, in this case, MySQL. Uh, what we can do here is add a services layer configured into our job uh, for MySQL. We can tell it which Docker image to use, in this case, MySQL 8.0. We'll set up some environment variables for that image uh, to allow an empty password and to make a test database. You can, of course, make this whatever you want, uh, process, con, dev, something to that nature. And then we're going to pass through the ports 
and the options here just make sure that MySQL starts up. The service actually starts before the job continues, and if it fails after 15 seconds or 45 seconds, whatever the math is there, uh, that the job or the workflow itself would end up failing. Now the next thing we would want to do is uh, down here for our tests, again, things that we can't configure in uh, the PHP unit file, but are specific to CI, it's going to be easier to set them up right here in the YAML. So much like we did with this composer off flag, we can set up uh, additional environment variables here. All right, that should have everything set up for us. So we have our environment variables for MySQL that we added, the ports uh, that we configured are passing through, uh, oops, in this case, ports, and we've specified everything else for our Laravel application to make sure that the database configuration is uh, going to work now. Now, again, at this point, we don't have anything that's actually hitting the database. So let's fix that real quick. We'll jump into our example test. And let's change this to use refresh database. And we can simply just say user uh, equals user factory create. And just for giggles, we can say this assert not null uh, user ID, right? This should come back with a user uh, that has uh, been uh, injected uh, into the database. And we can actually take this a step farther by saying user assert same uh, one on user all count. All right, there we go. And before we commit this, I'm actually gonna check out a separate branch just to make sure when you're coming back and looking at this demo repo, you can kind of systematically see all the different things that I've added. So let's get check out dash B and we'll do a git commit, uh, set up my SQL, git push origin head. And if we jump back out to GitHub, we should see that our lint and test suite is running. We'll give these just a second. And it looks like we actually got a failure. What did I do here? If we take a look, we'll see that unknown database process dev. Ooh, uh, yes, it is process con, I think we said. This is why, this is why I would have just left it test. I was trying to get fancy and I messed it all up. So git commit, or well, you know what, let's just append again, nice clean history, git push origin head dash F, and we'll let that start over. And we should see these both uh, pass as green now. Hey, and there we have it. Everything's green. It's running a test suite, which has MySQL. It's setting up the database, running our migrations. Everything that you would do locally when you run your test suite is now out there on GitHub running uh, for us anytime we push branches. There are some additional things I would like to talk about, uh, but I'm going to cut it here. I'm already probably a little bit over time. Uh, so there are other things you can look at here, uh, dusk and caching, some additional things that I would tweak the workflow with uh, if you are doing those within your Laravel projects. But hopefully this gave you a pretty good uh, understanding of GitHub Actions, uh, where to go to look for information, uh, and how you might go about setting up uh, these for your own projects. So if you haven't noticed already, this was pre-recorded, which is why we got some help from video editing. I'm actually on my way to Laracon India. So I hope though that if the uh, airplane Wi-Fi is pretty decent that uh, you've probably caught me in the live chat. But feel free to go ahead and send across your questions and we'll probably do a follow-up blog post. So thanks everybody, keep coding.